PowerShape 2011 has a new uh, solid feature which I'll show you now which is a solid transform feature now by default if I come to the uh, tools options general edits tab of PowerShape you'll see we have this tick box create solid transform feature which in PowerShape 2011 should be on by default okay now what I'll do let me just turn this off initially and I'll show you the difference between the two so here I have uh, my lunchbox model I have two copies of this solid here uh, and I'm going to mirror the one copy to get the second side of the model so I'm going to mirror it without a copy about the XY plane so the mirror operation is complete now let me just double click the uh, the solid that we mirrored across here and you'll see the history tree here so the last thing that happened to this solid was actually a fillet operation here now when we don't have transform features turned on and we perform an edit operation like a mirror PowerShape has to replay the complete history tree of the solid because we're transforming the geometry to a new position we're changing the geometry it has to replay the complete history tree to make sure that everything still works so that's uh, one feature um, which occurs when you don't have uh, these history transform history options turned on now the other thing which will happen is uh, if I um, open up an edit operation for for this particular solid so let's say modify you'll note here that uh, if we modify anything in the tree we're actually modifying it in its new transformed location so PowerShape has performed the transform operation without adding anything to the history tree and as far as PowerShape is concerned this is the new location of the solid itself okay so let me undo that mirror operation to go back to the original state of the model and I'm going to come to the tools options and now I'm going to turn on transform features and we'll pick the solid and again perform the same mirror operation so again I'll turn the mirror function off and hit the uh, XY plane now first of all you'll note when you do this that mirroring with the transform features turned on is much much faster okay and the reason for that is that we don't have to completely replay the history tree of the the model when this operation takes place second thing you'll notice is that the new uh, or the, the the mirrored solid the edited solid has this new feature at the top so this is the transformation okay if we say modify we can modify that transformation in this case it's a mirror operation we could make some modifications to that if we wanted to okay now the the other thing um, to note here is that again if I open up a modify option for this solid okay if we modified one of the boolean operations you can see that uh, we're modifying or we're, we're doing the modification in the original location okay because the transformation is just part of the history everything will be uh, replayed back in its original location okay so this is a much more true record of what's happened to the solid because when we transform the solid um, it is changing the geometry so that needs to be recorded in the history tree but you do have the option not to if you do not wish to add that feature in the history of the solid a new feature for solid modeling in PowerShape 2011 is the addition of solid hints and solid hints are raised when there is a failure of a, a solid operation and I'll show you um, how we can use or how we can uh, get information from the solid hints right now so what I have here is uh, two solid models one intersecting the other okay so I'm going to make the outer solid the active solid I'm going to select the inner solid and I'm going to say we want to do a solid remove or subtraction now in this case this is obviously parasolid 
this operation fails because both solids would form this knife edge or this um, zero thickness edge which is the reason for the failure now you can see here that we get this operation faults report instantly created and this is showing us where the fault is okay and it's giving us uh, some information about the, the fault and suggesting exactly what we what we could try to um, eliminate the fault okay now there's three um, different ways of uh, reporting uh, problems here we can show uh, faces we can show curves and we can show vertices so what we have here is a curve if I turn the option off we see the curve disappears now I can also if I want optionally say create geometry and finish <coughs> and when that option is active PowerShape will also create geometry showing me uh, where the problem is okay so I can analyze the problem and possibly fix uh, the problem and to enable the solid operation to work correctly so let me move on to the uh, second example I'm going to make this model active again this is a parasolid model and what I'll do here is to try and attempt a solid thicken just to show you that this at the moment is just a single skin we have no thickness so I'm going to attempt a solid thicken two millimeters okay <coughs> and the operation has failed and let's have a look so this is the point where the problem is let's say draw the faces and if I zoom in here you can see that these two faces actually overlap form this overlap region and that's why we've got this uh, problem but it's very easily spotted um, because of the uh, solid hints ability PowerShape 2011 contains a few new features um, to enhance the solid doctor functionality so here we have a solid model and I'm going to run the solid doctor to check the status of this solid and you can see there's a number of uh, problems reported with this solid now the first thing I'll show you here is that we have a new fault which is this large vertex fault and this is basically where lots of surface corners all come together okay it's a very low level parasolid fault um, so let me pick uh, this particular large vertex there's one specific repair type for these large vertex which is a replace vertex so let's attempt that on this particular problem area in the solid model here okay <clears throat> and here's the second new feature so the large vertex has been fixed but in fixing that we've actually introduced a new problem into the solid which is a gap and you can see straight away that the solid doctor has been enhanced to show us when these uh, new problems are um, created by resolving an old problem okay so see the large vertex is fixed but we've now got a gap so I can pick the gap and let me try uh, one of the options here which is to link and heal across the edge okay and that's fixed let's recheck the solid and you can see that particular fault is is fixed now we can carry on fixing this um, solid model However, if we're happy with the state of it now, we have another new option on the form, which is here, and this saves a copy of the solid in its current state. Okay, so I could I could put this in uh, any position here, save it as an XT or an XB file, and there we can continue straight on with the solid doctor fixing the next set of problems. So three new features: first, a new fault, low-level fault, which is a large vertex second is the fact that uh, the solid doctor will instantly show you when fixing one fault creates another fault and third midway we can save the solid at any point and we don't have to exit the solid doctor to do so there's been a couple of small changes to the way um, primitives are defined in 
PowerShape 2011. So what I have here is one surface primitive, which is a cone, and one solid primitive, which is an extrusion. If I double click the, cer the, uh, the cone, the surface primitive, you'll see here that we have some new options on the form in this pull down list. So we can now define the cone in these three different ways. So top radius and base radius, as, as previously, but we now have two new options, which is top radius and angle, base radius and angle. So if I say base radius, uh, 50, but I want the angle to be 15 degrees, and you'll see the top radius will automatically um, populate. Okay, and that effect, that change affects um, surface cones as well as solid cones. Now extrusions um, have changed very slightly in that we now have um, length and draft angle for direction one and length and draft angle for direction two. So if we say set the top draft angle to be 10 degrees, like so, I'll set the length underneath to be 20, but I'm going to activate the uh, separate draft angle and set that to be minus 10. Okay, so again, new option to specify uh, a separate draft angle for the negative direction. Now, the other new feature for all primitives is that on the uh, workspace tab of all primitives, we can hit this button which creates a copy of the work plane which is the, the center of the primitive. Okay, so if I click that option, PowerShape tells me a work plane has been created and its name is one. Okay, and if we now drop into a transparent wireframe mode, you can see there's the work plane created. And let's do exactly the same for the cone. Double click the cone to get the edit operations, create the work plane, okay. OK, and there's the work plane created. So that feature is available for all primitives in PowerShape 2011. The next new feature is the ability in PowerShape 2011 to create electrodes using the electrode wizard um, when there is no active solid. Now in a case where there's no active solid, PowerShape 2011 assumes that you're going to create an electrode from surfaces and it modifies the front page of the wizard accordingly. So the data I'm starting with here is a surface model. And if I just zoom into this surface model, you can see that we've got a few problems here. We've got gaps. In this area here, we've got overlaps. Okay, so to convert this to a valid solid model would take a bit of work. If we wish to extract an electrode from these two angular regions here, um, in PowerShape 2011 we can do so without um, spending the time to convert this into a valid solid. Now I'm going to select all of the red surfaces using the selection filter. Okay, So the red surfaces surround the region where I want to extract the electrode from. I have no active solid so when I launch the electrode wizard PowerShape modifies the front page of the wizard and assumes I'm going to create um, an electrode from surfaces. Okay, so I shall move through the wizard. I'm going to pick the areas that I wish to extract, which are these two. Extraction, direction, Z. Leave everything as default. Choose the electrode blank. Enter a small collision gap, 0.2, because we have some small distances. And finish the electrode. PowerShape detects a collision between the blank and the main um, part surfaces and will automatically trim everything back for us to give us an electrode like so. So we have the setup sheet, we have the general assembly sheet, and we also have the electrode created like so. Okay, now I'm going to undo that operation and repeat it and show you an additional feature. So let me just get back to the point where we started, which is here. Now let's suppose you wanted to include some additional surfaces in the creation. Okay, so here on level two, I've got these additional extra surfaces on both sides. And we wish to add those into our electrode. So we can do that again. We'll start by selecting just the red surfaces 
so we're not selecting these additional surfaces only the part surfaces themselves and again launch the electrode wizard so the product button is already uh, used we have the green tick I'm going to pick the electrode button and select the additional surfaces holding down the shift button to add them to the selection like so move forward to the next step where we identify again the regions to be extracted again extraction direction Z and I'll keep all of these values exactly the same so same electrode blank same spark gap 0.2 and again no export so once again we're informed there is a collision power shape tells us it will trim the electro blank back to compensate for the collision and if I come back and just take a quick look at the electrode that we've created you can see there that we've included the additional surfaces in our electrode creation so power shape 2011 allows us to create electrodes from surface data.